everybody. It's Stuart A. Swerdlow for Expansions.com, and this is my news podcast for the first week in February 2012. And it has been a very newsworthy week, and a lot of strange things have happened. And one of the examples that I want to talk to you about for is the person in the Northwest uh, who uh, actually blew up his home with his two children in it. Now, this man was accused last year of murdering his wife on a camping trip in Utah when he said during the night um, she left the encampment and, and disappeared and he was out uh, walking in the snow with the children um, and when they came back she was gone. Uh, of course, later on, uh, one of the children, the children are two boys ages of seven and five, one of the boys told his grandmother that mommy was in the trunk and of course, the police never did find the body, but he was the husband, a person of uh, suspicious uh, uh, suspect that they were looking at. And apparently, uh, because of that, he had lost custody of his children, and they had been in the custody of the wife's uh, parents. And so, um, during a visit this past week, uh, the social worker got out of the car, and the children ran to the door of the house to see their father when he locked them in and the social worker could not get into the house and the next thing you know the house blew up killing the man and his two children just this morning i saw news of an autopsy of the bodies and it said that before he blew up the house he actually killed his children with an axe and then blew up the house so my question is, how could parents do such a thing? If he was guilty and if he knew he was going to be convicted of murder of his wife, why kill his children? Why would he do such a thing? We're seeing this all over uh, the U.S. and other countries. For example, last year, there was a woman in New York who was having a custody fight with her husband or soon-to-be ex-husband, and she took her four children in a car and drove it into the, uh, the Hudson River and drowned them. What is the point of that? To punish the surviving parent. Or the, uh, the father uh, in the South, I believe it was in Alabama or Georgia, where the wife went out shopping and when she came home, found the head of her handicapped child on the lawn. Her husband had killed him uh, to spite her. Over and over and over again, we're seeing parents kill their own children. I know personally, I couldn't do that to my pet, let alone uh, a child or my own child. What is getting into these people to do such a thing? This has to be mind control. This has to be programmed. No parent, no one who loves their child could possibly do that to spite the other parent or another relative. It's not possible because the, then the, that's not love. There's something devious about that person, and that would have been known way before that incident would have occurred. So something's going on with ritual sacrifice of children. And as this year, 2012, goes on, and we investigate more and more about the programming activations of this particular program, I will be revealing that to you and letting you know what's going on. Um, in relation to that, there actually have been bodies found that have been dead for years in private homes. And in fact, just uh, this week, a real estate agent in Milwaukee went into a home that was in foreclosure. And when he went into the home, he found on the staircase the skeletal remains of the previous owner who had been dead for four years. Now, how can you be dead in your home for four years and nobody knows about it? In fact, the body was found on that dead man's 45th birthday. Very interesting. In London, a woman whose creditors were after her for not paying her bills in three years actually found her body in her apartment where it may have been since 2006. Now, this woman was only 38 years old. She must have had relatives, friends. Wouldn't the electric company turn off the lights? Wouldn't the water company be looking at why, you know, shutting off the water? Wouldn't an odor have developed? Wouldn't mail and newspapers uh, accumulate? How can you not know other people who would find you after years and years and years? And the worst case was recently in uh, 2011, when in Sydney, Australia, 
they found the body of an elderly woman who had obviously passed on, they said, in the year 2003. So she'd been dead for eight years before anybody found her. This has been going on all over the world, finding dead bodies in homes. How could there not be, especially in this day of surveillance and intrusions by the government, the knowledge that this person needs to be found and not look for them in their own home? So there's something going on with that as well, something to do with entombment or with death and uh, death actually uh, integrating with life and interaction with that. And I'm going to look into that also this year and reveal this information to you. Now, I want to talk about some uh, uh, international events that have been going on. Uh, for example, in Syria, and I've mentioned this to you many, many times before, there are now at least over 6,000 deaths uh, by President Assad, who is attacking his own people who want him removed from office. Even the Arab League uh, is against him and have recalled their ambassadors from uh, Damascus. We also know that Syria is being supported by Russia and China, who actually vetoed a UN resolution condemning them for the deaths. Now, of course, even if they haven't vetoed the resolution and went through, it would have been meaningless. It's just a piece of paper saying, we condemn you, bad person, bad country. It means absolutely nothing. But why would they support Syria in, in, in what it's doing? Because Russia and China have billions and billions of dollars of investments in Syria that they don't want to lose. And so, therefore, they are supporting a government that is actually against its people. Well, hello, most governments are against their people, but at least uh, uh, Syria is killing thousands and thousands, bombing towns, uh, torturing people. It's really unbelievable. Of course, a lot of what we see on the media is hyped up. You know, for example, you've heard about the floods in Thailand and Bangkok, and the truth of the matter is it wasn't raining there, and that the uh, government of Thailand actually opened up the dams and allowed the floodwaters to flood the area. It had nothing to do with rain. And that I got from a client of mine who lives in Bangkok for many years and told me about these things. So what you see on the news may not exactly be what's happening, but certainly people are dying there, and it is being orchestrated uh, by the Illuminati and the New World Order because they want this entire region to be under their control without uh, the fundamentalist influence. Although, initially, you're going to see government changes like you are in Tunisia and Libya and Egypt where the fundamentalists are taking power, and they're doing that on purpose so that they also can be removed to show that the people didn't want the old government, nor do they want the fundamentalist government, they want the New World Order government. And so, uh, also what's going on here, the very cold and severe weather, all you global warm warming uh, believers, guess what? It's snowing in Rome, it's snowing in Corsica and Sardinia, and it is snowing heavily in Algiers, Tunisia, and in Tripoli, Libya. Did you ever think you'd go to Libya and be in a snowstorm? Well, that's what's happening, and it's happening more than once. So, no global warming going on in Europe and Africa. Yes, there is some issues going on here in North America, where the cold air has been bottled up over Alaska and the Yukon, but it is slowly starting to slide down, even this late in the season. And I suggest that perhaps towards the end of February and through March and April and maybe May, it's going to be winter uh, because they've artificially delayed it to prove global warming, but they kind of got it screwed up and Mother Nature says, oh, really? Well, let's make it snow in places that never snowed before to compensate for that. So be aware that uh, what you see may not be what you're getting. Also, if I may, I want to show you what's uh, uh, happening. Oh, by the way, uh, we do expect um, an attack on Iran uh, probably before end of summer. I know some people say April, May, June, but if they're giving those dates, that means it's not going to be those dates. Um, also, uh, for the Israelis to say that they're not prepared for that, or that the decision is many months away, or that they really couldn't defend the country if they were retaliated, um, that's also for public consumption. 
the Israelis are never, ever going to allow the Iranians to have a nuclear weapon. There are Israeli submarines already here in the Arabian Sea. And uh, there is some information that says there may be Israeli submarines actually in the Persian Gulf. So uh, that's, that's kind of interesting. But uh, on the other hand, there are Iranian merchant vessels off the coast of the U.S. And many of them have been fitted with missile launchers. So should the Iranians be attacked? I think that the U.S. mainland may also be attacked. And as we also know, the border between the U.S. and Mexico is very porous. And despite what they tell you, many, many are crossing illegally. And many of them have had weapons with them. And in fact, the border guard said in the last few years, there's been a tremendous increase in illegals coming in from Central Asia and the Middle East and North Africa. And so uh, the ones they caught may have been a diversion for the ones that got through. So we have to keep aware of this year, 2012, there may be another attack. Now, going to more uh, US news, um, for the first time ever, Chicago Public Schools this week are creating an earthquake drill for the schools and the students. And that is the first. And as you know, 2011 and 2012 is the great central U.S. shakeout drill to commemorate the 200th anniversary of the New Madrid Fault Line earthquakes, the three of them that happened in 1811 and 1812, and which they say may happen again at any time. But interesting, you know, that this week they're having the earthquake drill when on the 31st of January, there was an earthquake to the northwest of Chicago, a small one, but still an earthquake. And within 24 hours of that earthquake and less than 50 miles away from the epicenter, a nuclear power plant mysteriously released toxic radioactive uh, steam that filtered down into downtown Chicago. Now, the news media said that the steam was actually clean and not dangerous. Well, what did they want them to say? Look at everybody, there's a wave of radioactive steam heading towards downtown Chicago, flee for your life. They're not gonna do that. They're gonna let it settle and people will get sick and they'll, and they'll know years later, they won't know what happened to them. So be prepared, there's something going on around Chicago area, earthquake, a nuclear, issue already that's two and when there's two there's going to be three so those of you in the chicago area uh, keep your eyes open and your ears open uh, something's going on there uh, also interestingly uh, in the mojave desert scientists say that there is a volcano that could blow at any moment and in fact they have known about this caldera volcano for many decades, they originally felt that it exploded about 10,000 years ago and that it was dormant. However, they recently realized that magma was coming much closer to the surface. Uh, there were actually hundreds of microquakes in the area. And doing more tests, they realized, but uh, the last explosion was actually only 800 years ago. And in fact, more uh, research showed it explodes every 500 to 800 years. And so here we are 800 years later and the thing is ready to blow. Now, they said that when it does blow here in the Mojave, that it's so far away from uh, city areas that it would not uh, create any damage. But when a volcano blows, especially close to the San Andreas fault line, I imagine that might set off a whole chain of events across the West Coast. So those of you in Southern California, be prepared because the Mojave Desert is ready to blow. Talk about being hot, it's hot in more ways than one. And so uh, these are the informations that I have for you uh, today. Uh, please go to expansions.com and register to become part of our forums, members of our site. Uh, we also have free information for you. Uh, we also have amazing seminars coming up at the end of February and in uh, April, but you should look at expansions.com. Until next time, this is Stuart A. Swerdlow for expansions.com. Bye.